What up, everybody? This is your boy Tech G back with another video to help you successfully pass the CompTIA 220 1001 examination. So let's get into it. In this video, you will learn about issues associated with hard drives and RAID arrays. So let's talk about some of the common symptoms. So the common symptoms that are associated with hard drives that can affect the overall performance of a hard drive are as follows. You have read write failures. These can be caused by dropping the magnetic drive, damaged cables. So you want to swap out those cables, damaged SATA host adapters on the motherboard, overheated hard disk and overheated CPU or chipset. And if that's the case, you need to remove the dust and dirt, remove any loose or failed heat sinks and remove old thermal grease. Another issue is slow performance, and this could be caused by reduced performance configuration of three gigabits per second or six gigabit per second drives. Using three gigabit per second cables with six gigabit per second drives and host adapters, SATA host adapters that have been configured for IDE or emulation mode, and SATA host adapters that have been configured to run at reduced speeds. Another issue could be loud clicking noises, and this could be caused by repeated rereads of defective disk surfaces by the hard disk drive heads. So you need to make backups immediately and replace the disk. Humming noises can be caused by the rapid head movement on a normally functioning hard disk. Another issue could be the failure to boot, and this could be caused by a couple issues. You could have a failure to boot due to the boot sequence not specifying the hard disk or not listing system hard disk after drives with the non-bootable media. It can also be caused by the CMOS settings, which may have been corrupted, and the system cannot find the bootable drive. And then it can also be caused due to the boot configuration data store being used by Windows to control disk booting that has potentially been been corrupted. Another issue could be the drive not being recognized, and this could be caused by a bus powered USB hard disk not being recognized, USB or Thunderbolt drives that aren't recognized, and SATA hard disk or SSD drives that are not being recognized. What if you can't find the operating system? Well, this could be the result of a non-bootable disk in the USB drive. The boot sequence is not listing the hard disk or the incorrect installation of another operating system. What if the RAID isn't found? Well, this could be the result of the RAID function being disabled in the system BIOS. So you will want to reconfigure the SATA ports used for RAID as RAID and then restart the system. Or it could be due to power or data cables to RAID drives that have been disconnected. So you need to reconnect those cables to the RAID drives and restart the system. What if the RAID stops working? This could be because of a failure of one or more disk drives in the RAID array. So let's take RAID 0, for instance. If you determine that this drive has failed, you need to replace it and follow the vendor's recommendations to recreate the RAID, restore the latest backup, but also understand that any data that has not been backed up will be lost. What if it has to deal with RAID 1, 10, or 5? You need to determine which drive has failed replace it and follow the procedures provided by the RAID vendor to rebuild the array. Now, if both drives have failed in RAID 0 or RAID 1, the arrays must be rebuilt with new drives and the latest backup has to be restored. Any data that has not been backed up will be lost. Now, if two or more drives have failed in RAID 10 or 5, recovery options may vary according to the exact configuration of the array. So for the recovery options, you need to see your RAID vendor's documentation. And finally, let's talk about smart errors. So self-monitoring analysis and reporting technology is a defect warning feature supported by both SATA and PETA hard disk. When smart errors are displayed, you need to back up the system immediately to determine if the drive is actually bad or if the message was a false positive. You need to download and run the disk testing software provided by your system or drive vendor. Typical items that are monitored when when it comes to smart errors are as follows. You have drive temperatures, read retries, slow spin ups, and too many bad sectors. 
to hear a couple smart warnings that you might need to be on the lookout for. So if you see a message that says hard disk failure is imminent, a hard drive in your system reports that it may fail or smart failure is imminent, you need to back up your data. All right, so that's it for this lesson. So we have talked about issues associated with hard drives and RAID arrays. Now, if you felt like you got something valuable out of this information, go ahead and hit the like button, the share button, drop a comment, but most importantly, subscribe to this channel. Also go check out my website, Technology G, so that you can get read up on the latest and greatest to help you successfully pass the CompTIA 220 1001 examination. And until next video, ladies and gentlemen, peace. Thank <laughs> you.